computing. So all the students at Hearing us, it's uh, something different than what you study until now. It's a different way of computing, different type of architecture, uh, which is very useful for uh, machine learning. So that we'll talk today. Uh, with the agenda, we'll start with uh, with introduction to associative uh, processing. We see some use case example, such as similarity search, a large scale uh, attention uh, computing for uh, for uh, NLP, a few short one shot uh, learning based on associative computing. We show some of the software model which is based on uh, TensorFlow and some uh, future future approach. Okay, so what we say is that matrix multiplication is not enough. So actually, all what we know today is the GPGPU try to improve the matrix multiplication, but as we know. When, and if you look on the next generation or new type of, uh, of machine learning algorithm, we see that we need high precision floating point operation. Uh, we need to support a multi-precision from one bit, two bit, four bit, etc. For, for inference, for real time inference. We have to do some linearity scaling for big data. We, we want to add one chip, two chip, more chip, more both together. We want a linear, linear scale. We have some functions that are serial operations that cannot run in parallel. And we support them, for example, top K, recommendation, speech recognition, a, a, a classification, and also heavy computation, such as nonlinearity exponent, for example, in softmax. And of course, we have to support these band, 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 uh, bandwidths uh, to get um, high speed and, uh, and low power. Okay, let's start from the 80s. In the 80s, this is the von Neumann architecture. We know that there is a memory, there is a CPU, just the, CP, the memory is a dense but slower, and the CPU is just a logic, and, and, um, but run, run faster. Uh, then when based on uh, the growth of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of more lows, uh, CPU become, become faster. In order to, uh, to, support, uh, so to support the bandwidth, people start adding more and more memory inside the CPU, the cache. This is about the, the 90s, for, for example. But in the two, 2006, there was a very, very high, very uh, inefficient way to increase the frequency, so things become flattening, and but more slows, number of transistors that we can uh, we can put in a, in a chip can it can continue to to increase. So in this point, we start talking on parallel computing at two cores at the same at the same CPU, talking to a memory, but there is. Uh, but there is, there is um, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, let's back again. Okay, so here, okay, uh, we're, we have to put some uh, local and global memory, not, not just a local memory, we have to add local and global memory uh, uh, to support, to support uh, the bandwidth. But as we can see here is that memory becomes the larger part uh, of the chip. We continue to add more and more memory uh, on top of, uh, of uh, the logic. Now, even in GPGPUs, we have DRAM, we have caches, we still have, we still have a memory. So we have very high power, large size, expensive. So what next? So this is a von Neumann. This is a von Neumann architecture. So what's next? And uh, this I took from one of the Stanford presentation, as we can see here that the power consumption to bring data from the memory to the CPU is orders of magnitude higher than compute inside the memory. So now I'm going to show you how we change the rules. Memory, as we know, traditional memory, as we know, are much smarter than we think. We can do a lot in standard conventional memory. It's a not a special memory. It's not a, a other type of memory. It's standard, it's standard memory. It's not a quantum memory. It's a standard memory. 
that uh, they see how smart is the memory and what we can do with the memory. So with APU, which call it associative processing unit, that we will see, as you can see here, there is a memory, which is the memory and compute are in the same die, connected, connected to the CPU and the memory are connecting together. It's the same. And there is a simple uh, CPU that we have to control this type of memory. Now let's see how it's work. What exactly, what do we mean when we say compute, computed memory? It's not a memory and a CP and, and processor in the same, in the same chip. It's a memory and the processing is the same. When I say the same, this means that the instruction is just read and write. There is no addition, no multiplication. With read and write, we can do addition. With read and write, we can do multiplication. Just two instructions. Read instruction and write instruction. That's it. This is the microcode. Now we'll see how, how it works. As we see here, this is again volume and computing. What is a computer? Computer is, what is ALU? ALU is just a machine with logic that has to read data from the memory one row at a time, one other at a time, and change its state. There is a logic in the memory, change its state. This is a computer. The ALU has to change the state of the memory, it has to read the data from the memory, change its state, and write it back. Changing state. So can we achieve, can we change the state to take the memory? This is eight years. People, what they do, they just change state in the memory. So there is a different way to change the state. Not just bring the data to the LU. Yes, the conventional memory has the ability to change state during the read and write operation. You will see. Now suppose this is a memory. This is a memory with data. I want to change the state without CPU, just with read and write. I want to do an operation without connecting to a CPU, just to the memory. What is the trick? Very simple. Instead of accessing one row at a time, I access multiple rows, many, two, three, four, ten thousand, read enable, and many for write. So what, what I'll get here, this is a bit line, I know that I can read the bit line, but if on this bit line, I just charge zero and one, many zero and one, I get something merge all of, of this function. But no, this is not a merging. This is just a simple NOR operation. So the memory as it's built today over the last eight years has the ability to do NOR operation during the bit line. So what we see here, the memory is the memory. The bit line, the bit lines themselves are changing the state during the read and write. The bit line, the wire, the wire is a gate. The wire of the memory is a gate. The data is the data and the wire are the gate. So if it's a gate, if we change state in the memory, why we have to write it to the CPU? Why just not keep it here? So as we can see here, standard memory on the bit line satisfy Moore's law because if we have a system, if we have a system that can be NOR or NAND, it satisfies the Morgan law. So this means that we can do any type of fraction. Addition, multiplication, floating point, similarity search, uh, CNN, DNN, all inside a memory. Because we satisfy the Morgan law. Example. Now let's see. Two table, just random two table. I have A, B, C as input, and I have D as the output. We have to implement this by a gate. You know, this is kernel table. We know this with a gate, which is a logic function with a kernel, not A, not B, plus B, C. But this is equal, I put not, not, it's the same. I get not, not A, not C. So this is a function, which is, as you can see here, this is an end of NAND. So in memory, we can do NOR and NOR, and NAND is the same. But if, if you define zero as a high and one 
is low, it's a NAND. So NAND nor is the same. So we have NAND of NAND here. So what we do here, in order to implement this NAND, we do just read. Read. Read and write. Read to input A0 and C0 and write to some temporary different cell in the memory. Here, we open this two-bit line, a two-word line, and write to T2. And then we combine this name, another, we just read T1 and T2 and write it, uh, and write it uh, to the destination, whatever. So, uh, so I'll show you, so, if you have, because it's a memory, it's not like a CPU, oh, it's just bit line. If you have, let's say, 10 million of that, 20 million of that, 1 billion, it's like two clocks to do that, because it's a memory. So every bit line now become a processor. A processor that can do floating point 16 bit in 100 and one, in 80 clocks. But if you take a million of that, you get those peta uh, operations, uh, etc. So every mean term takes one clock. So memory, traditional memory, is a Carnot table a, a machine, parallel Carnot table machine. Traditional memory, standard memory, don't have to design, just change this. Others controller with a way that you can read and write multiple row at the same time. So it's actually, as you can see, a different type of computing. It's not a CPU that just brings a data by the CPU, just control, tell the memory, just I want to do the matrix multiplication. And, they, and when it's finished, just, just tell me. That's what the C CPU is doing here. Another example, suppose we have the 8-bit, 8, 8 vector 8, 32 million number. I, uh, I want to add with another 32 million numbers, all sitting in standard memory. I looked on all, I looked, I implement the truth tables, full letter truth tables, take four clocks. So I go, I, I'm, I'm do the truth table of the least significant, every, every bit slice at a time. So it's take four clocks per bit slice. Uh, so it takes 32 clocks to do this addition. If I have 32 million divided, uh, if it's 32 clocks divided by 32 million and I run the memory in one gigahertz, here just simple example that we can get one peta ops easily in the memory. Okay. This is just the beginning. This is just warming up. We can do much more in the memory. This just so show you flood beta. Uh, we can do logic. We can do more in the memory. Here we go. Now, in, uh, we know that in deep learning, we want to do addition, multiplication. We want to do in memory to set bandwidth. But there's many, many cases that we want to do search. There is similarity search and exact search. We want to do search. We have a pattern, and we have to look on all the, all the memory. As we say that we want to do some tradition, we, want, we don't want to add another memory, another memory uh, to that. So if I have, for example, here a key, here a key, 0110, and I want to search, to search it here in the memory. So this is here we have 011, so I want to search it. So, again, this is traditional memory. So what we do here, we're just duplicating the data, one line in one clock. So if it's four bit, it takes four clock. We duplicate, du duplicate with inverse. We duplicate with inverse is a key. Now, all places where there is one in the key, open the read enable. And if, and here, this guy, looked only zero in its NOR operation, it's get one, and here it gets zero, so it's match. So just, again, the key just opens the bit line. It's open, sorry, but it, it opens the, the, the word line. Just multiple read enable. That's what we do. Okay, but sometime we want to, we have some cases that we have don't care. Zero, one, and don't care. And we want to search this zero, one, one, zero here, so here, they don't care, don't care, so I want that, I want a tag here and tag here to say that I found this one and this guy. So what is the trick here, what we do here? First of all, we put zero here, 
and put zero if we inverse the data except the wrong pair. Duplicate again the key, open the reasonable, get one and one. So okay. Now what we can see is that when we have a memory cell, we know that it's a bit. If it takes two bit, it's a two bit, and also one input NOR gate and one TCAM gate. If we take three, it can be three bit, and three input NOR gate, two input, so we have all this, we all this type, all this type combination, and, and and there's no limit to how we can define it. So there is a lot of room here for to do a lot of research how we can do more in the memory that uh, here. Okay. Now, uh, what we can summarize this point is that we can look on all bit line. Every bit line is a different number as a vector. That we call it vector A and vector B. We can do C. We can, if we can do a NOR and NAND operation, it depends on number of clock, but we can implement any function, which call it between A and B. What else we can do in the chip, actually, there are going to be a chip that it's not just a science fiction. It's going to have a chip by tapping out in a in few months. And it's going to be a product say, mid, mid next year that with this associative chip. So we have in the chip a capability to move section back and forth before doing the operation. And this gives us the ability to do neighborhood operations, for example, convolutional FFT, etc. Uh, if we combine compute and, uh, and the exact search, we have, for example, we have a database. We search the 20. We found that there are three. We can count them inside. And there's a lot of applications for search and count, like random forest, nearest neighbor, et cetera. So many, many, many uh, application and any application to do that. Now, if we compare uh, here, this is an logarithmic scale, then this is a linear scale. So here is, this is the APU, the associative. This is the GPU. This is the FPGA, and this is the, uh, the CPU. So the different, as you can see, this is the FPGA, uh, uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is the GPGPU. Right now, um, uh, the, the GPU in a single chip can support uh, eight teraflops. And we're in, in a small chip, we support 1.6 teraflops. So we are, we are about the same order of magnitude uh, as, a, a, as a GPU. Actually, the GPU is starting from graphic processor, so they push the matrix multiplication. We are starting, we are a memory company. We, we were a memory company, and we started from memory, and we, we, we moved from memory to compute. So. So our background is a memory to bring forth. So we are pushing in this direction, and the GPGPU pushing to this direction. But we have also solution for that because in right now in in teraflops per watt, we are more than 100 gigaflops per watt, which is better than better than the GPGPU. But actually, this not this not this is not so important because it is we have the multi precision. A top case search later on, you will see a softmax, nonlinearity, scalability. This is what we can get with the, with the associative uh, uh, processing. So, here the point here is that in, in, uh, in CPU, in, in CPU, we send, we send address to the memory, and in place computing in APU, we, uh, we search by a content. In CPU, we fetch the data from the memory, and we mark the data in place. So we can mark the data and do the operation only to bit line, which we already marked. We, we compute serially per core. We compute everything, everything in place. So this is a, this is a difference. Now let's look a little bit about the architecture. Internally, there are many, many banks, and many sections, and every bit line every bit line, I can do some NOR or NAND operation. If we return back to our, 
to our uh, Kahnon table example, here, here we want to implement this to an end, and suppose we have this data here, and, and, and we can implement in every section this mean term and this mean term because they are disconnected, so this is bit line. Actually, it is 24, 24 rows in every section in the chip. Now, we are switch those two sections together and, and connect the NOR between the two reds and get the uh, NOR and, and get the final result and then disconnect it and continue. This is the way how, how it works. If you want to do some neighborhood operation, we have the ability to shift this to right, to shift it to the left, connect, disconnect. So we have all this ability uh, in the memory. So actually with the read-write operation and with the multi-section uh, switches left, right. So we built a library that support, we have no limitation which function to do. <laughs> okay, so this is architecture, has many, call it MLB, a mem logic block, a memory logic, because we convert memory to logic. And uh, this, is, this is like the layout, the, the layout of the chip. So if we compare this layout to, to, uh, to standard layout of GTB GPU, what we see here? Here we have in GP GPU, there is a block that dedicated to floating point 64. Blocks are dedicated to uh, to uh, to 32. Every function, every function has different block. Here, it's a, it's a, it's it's based on the memory technology. It's multifunction. Here, for example, here we can sometimes do floating points. Sometimes we want to do softmax. Sometimes we want to do a top K. So it's fully programmable. We don't lose. So if, for example, this guy. Here we don't want to do floating point 64. So all this area is not useful. It's not useful. Here all the area, everything is working all the time to run our algorithm. And of course the power is much lower because we don't bring data to external memory. Just at the beginning we just chunk the data and we do most of the uh, computation inside the memory. Let's you now look on some uh, some uh, uh, some example example applications. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the, uh, for example the k, near, k nearest neighbor. K nearest neighbor. Uh, here we have uh, in this example we have. A, a, a three groups, call it red, green, and blue, a divided two-dimensional here, X and Y, and, and we have a new items coming in, and we want to decide to classify to which groups it belong. So what K news members say that, we, for example, K equal four, find the, the find the Four, find the four nearest neighbor of that and give me the majority. The majority is green in this case, so it's, it, 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 is, it is a green. So, but, but in real life, we are not have only a few products. We have billion, billion of products, and dimension is not 2x and y. Dimension can be 100 feature, 200 feature can be, can be very big. And k is not three. Sometimes we want to find k equal ten thousand. So, it's, this problem is cannot be implemented in GPU and in serial processor. It's take, it can be implemented, but it takes time, takes hours, takes days. Here, here we have the associative memory. We just we define. Okay, this is a bit line. Okay, uh, we have one hundred feature. Each feature is 16 bit. 16 bit by by 100 is 1.6 k bit. Okay. Each we define every bit line 1.6 1.6 k bit, and we dump them to, to get uh, in the memory. Then we have a query. We are we uh, just we open the write enable and we are in one clock. 
that it took with zero and one. We distribute the date, we distribute the query in all the memory, in two clock, not one by one, in two clock we distribute the query. Then we want to do operation with on two bit line with the norm end operation, with the logic as I showed you before. So, so what we do here is, here we want to do some, some cosine similarity. Cosine similarity is a dot product and add and uh, it's a, it's a dot product between between the two vectors, and and uh, um, there are some 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 normaliz uh, normalization. So this is cosine. I can do Hamming search, any any type any type of that. Everything is memory. Then I I show you the next slide. I found the top k in associative computing. We can compute. Top K, this is the only architecture that they can compute the top K in all of one complexity. This means that if we have one billion number and I want, I want to find the top 10,000, it takes take the same times to find the top 10, top billion, or top three, any number. Same time. All of one, I will show you. Maybe you start thinking how we can do that. Just. I hope I open your mind. Now maybe you can imagine how we do that. And then we we found the majority and and get the data, which is more than 1,000x improvements to any other architecture. And of course, it's very easily in the memory. This function already um, it will run in our chip, run under TensorFlow. We already support TensorFlow to call it top K, which run, in, which run in associative. Now let's see how we can compute top K in associative way. OK. We start with the most significant bit. Suppose we have the record, the bit lines going now uh, horizontally. We start with the most significant bit. Suppose we have, let's say, million of records. We looked on all the, the associative, we can look on bit lines as much as we want. So we looked on the, all the most significant bit. And say, OK, if there are some which are zero, are not candidate to be max. Only I looked on the one. And then continue. So I start. And this is the algorithm. I start with, uh, I define here a mask. Mask mean that all are candidate to be the top K. All are candidate. Now, when, before I start, for me, everybody can be the top K. V is exact count that in, in the progress. Here is the, is the exact number of every, if we have one, every, if we have one here, it's, it will belong to the top K. Now, Nothing is belong to the top K, and now every, nothing is belong to K, but every one now is a candidate. This is a candidate, and this is the real, real top K. So we start with the most significant bit. As you see here, we are uh, write another vector, again, in the memory, uh, the inverse of the data, and, and do end with a mask, because we want to know uh, to, whom, to whom to uh, 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 to whom to discuss with, uh, then we are with V, V is right now zero, and then we count the number of, of this uh, register, which is all done in, in parallel, and we got 11. And for example, we want K equal four, which is greater than, than what we want. So then we, then we go, we break it to the mark, and now continue and now continue to the next bit, do it again, until by the end of the day, we get, we get, so the complexity depends on the bit slice. It's all of the number of the, of, of the precision. It's all of one because it doesn't matter of what is the size uh, of the record. So actually we get all of one complexity of top, of top K. It's very, very, very important to application like uh, recommendation and deep learning, many people using, using the top K. Until now, 
people, it was hard to implement, so people tried to find another direction how to implement some algorithm. But this gave us the ability to do top K in real time, in microsecond level, not in second. So, and it actually works. Uh, and uh, this is the top K. Okay. So, if I have the ability to do top K very efficiently, I can maybe, I looked on a, on recognition, for example. If I, have, if I have an image, or if I have a text, or if I have a voice, I can convert any such signal to feature. For example, image, I can generate feature by the convolutional layer. Convolution layer generate a feature. I'm not talking about the uh, up to the fully connected. If I run the convolution layer, I get I, I get the feature of the image. If I take a text, I do some uh, word embedding, etc., to generate to generate feature. So if I have if I if I can generate the feature, and if I have a memory that can do compute, I can put all these feature in the memory, and then when they're coming in another signal, such as another image. I take this feature and I, and I do processing in real time inside the associative array uh, to, find, to find the similarity. OK. Another example is sparse matrix multiplication. As we know, there is a very, very it's a problem to do a sparse matrix multiplication because there is a lot of dependencies in, uh, in, uh, in the sparse, a lot of dependencies because it needs a key value search, a lot of dependencies. So actually in GPGPU, because they are want to push everything to vector multiplication, they do something like a SVD. So they break the sparse to small, small metrics by, by SVD, and they do the matrix multiplication. But here, we can do the matrix multiplication, but here we can also do the exact uh, matrix multiplication of real sparse metrics. How we do that? This is example show, for example, dense, dense vector by sparse, by sparse metrics. Uh, here, here is a, here is a sparse. As you can see here, there is a lot of zero, and I represent this metric. This can be one million by one million or more. I represent this sparse by by a table, by indices. Let's say the value number three is at column number one and row number two. The value of five is at column number two and row number three, et cetera, et cetera. So the number of item here is the number of the non-zero element in the sparse, in the sparse matrix. So what we do here, we, we said, okay, now this row is zero, so we're not talking about, we say, okay, this, we, uh, okay. We say, okay, search all columns equal row number two, this is row number two. I'm looking at all column which is, all row which is equal to, there's only one here. Do search, do exact search. And then to all of them, I write the value, minus two. Now I search a uh, column number three, I search a uh, column number four, here I find here and here. So I write for, the, for them together, minus one. This take clock, it doesn't matter if they're one or many, it's, the, it's take one clock. Once the data in the memory, so I use the function of a, of exact search, the function of a cam a, a ability of the associative memory to bring the data, to bring the data by indices. So the complexity here is, of course, it depends on the non-zero element, and then I do the multiply multiplication in parallel. And then I get the result, which, as you can see here, this is a complexity. A sparse by sparse multiplication. Even there is no, it's so complicated, even there is, it's not, this function even is not supported in, in TensorFlow, but we are going to write our function to TensorFlow that supports sparse with sparse matrix multiplication. So here we have two tables. We have to, to multiply two indices table and to get the third table here. So, so this is a re re representation of the first table and the second table. So actually it's the same. We, we get uh, the first uh, candidate, uh, call it row number one, 
and then we search and, and then we mark over them. And here we do the same as what we showed before. And then after a few iterations, we got, uh, we got uh, the, output, the, output, uh, uh, the output result here. So the complexity here, as you can see here, is O of beta plus log, log beta, which, which beta is a non-zero element. So as long as we have more and more non-zero element, there's more efficiency to do it in associative. It doesn't matter if the size of the matrix is one billion by one billion. It only depends on the non-zero element uh, compared, this is, the, this is the best as the, a, a, a GP, GPU got, which is depend of n square, et cetera, not on n, n of third. n square plus this, plus, 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 which is more than 1,000 improvement, but it's depend on the size of, and the number of non-zero elements. Yes. I'm just curious how you're programming. Uh, that does not appear, I, I can't quite recognize uh, the language. I, uh, Python. Oh, Python. Oh, Python. Uh, everything, gotcha. every, for you, it's microcode. Python and, of course, TensorFlow. We support, we support TensorFlow, which is a programming model of that. Okay. But if there are some people, student, whatever, PhD, that want to understand how to write in associative, of course, there is a lot of room for new researchers. They can contact us, and we will be more than happy to assist. <laughs> OK, softmax. Softmax is very useful today in, uh, in uh, natural language uh, processing, for example, to predict the next world. Or if I have, if I have a, a sentence and I, I, I need to do some, some attention because it gives us probability, so softmax is very, very important. Uh, and this is a function. Uh, unfortunately, it's very hard to implement it when, when the number of the items is big. Because we need to do a dot product of, uh, of millions of numbers sometimes. Uh, we have nonlinearity function. We have exponent. We have, uh, we have dependencies because we have, if you, if you saw the function of the softmax, is, is exponent by divided with the sum of all the exponent of all the database. So I, I cannot continue to the next step until I find the exponent or all the data. So suppose you have one million, where do you store them? And if the e, if its exponent is big, it's overflow. Sometimes it's more than 32 bit. Sometimes it's more than, than 64. It's very hard to implement it. So you need here you need an associative memory, associative array to store all these, these data. So dynamic range. What if exponent, if the number 20, uh, 32-bit floating is not enough, even 64. In associative, we can define sometimes if for specific application, I need floating point with mantissa, which is 200, and exponent is 50, I can define it easily for specific application and go back. So I have no limitation on how to define it. It's not that half precision, double precision, single precision, it's not exist here. It's not exist. I can define any precision I need to get the best performance. OK, Taylor series, uh, GP, GPU, and the CPU use Taylor series. Unfortunately, to get, we already checked it, to get uh, accuracy, you need at least 20 coefficients. At least 20 coefficients. So let's count how many multiplications. And 16 bit is not enough. 32 bits sometimes, even though even 64, it's terrible. Here, I want to show, but to remove this slide because it's proprietary. Uh, uh, we have a way how to do it very, very efficiently, very efficiently, which is which is order of magnitude faster, and we have almost close to zero, 100% uh, uh, accuracy, more than 99. Accuracy, but we can go to 100 accuracy if we increase the precision. So we have very efficient way how to do how to do the the softmax. So there's no no limitation here. Now we can do softmax. We can do top k. We can do now. Let's see NLP. NLP is a hot uh, application today. Let's see how we do we do a. Uh, so I have it time. Okay. <laughs> 
how we do NLP. NLP for question and answering, uh, you know, this is an example uh, of question and answering. For example, I have, the, I have a question and answering problem. For example, Dan put a book in the car. Then I have a very, very long story. And then my, uh, Mike took Dan's car, long story, and he drove to San Francisco. And I asked a question, where is the book now? So I have to, it, I cannot use simple uh, RNN because I need a memory, I need a big memory. A big memory to pay attention to all which, which happened in the story. Another example for language translation. This is from Kaiser, the second uh, example. The cow ate the hay because it was delicious or because it was hungry. It, I want to translate this from English to French, for example. There's two meanings to the it here. The it, it is to the cow or, or, it, it, be, because, uh, or it because it was delicious. So we need to do attention. We have to look on all the data, keep it in memory, and, and, uh, and do some softmax function. There are many, many algorithms. Right, one of them is, is, okay, oh, okay, sorry, okay. Let's see how we, how we do it, uh, how it works in the associative. We input the data, there is some encoder, we input the data, the data may be sentence. Mike uh, took uh, the bottle, sentence. So I use encoder to convert it to features. You should, remember, I show you the feature, how you take feature and put it in front K and in software. To convert to features, using neural network to convert to feature. There is some way to convert text to feature, which is, uh, which is word embedding, for example, or, uh, you know. I get the feature vector, and embedding it to the associative uh, memory processor. Embedding this feature, like all other features. So all the sentences, all the book, maybe all the Wikipedia can be seen there. Now, I have a bit, I call it the key. Now, I have a query. I have the feature vector. What I do here, I do dot product, get the result, compute softmax, everything in the memory. Compute softmax, everything with read and write operation. Again, read and write operation. The basic instruction. So if you looked on the atomic function, it's read and write operation, again. Then I have to multiply this softmax by, the, by a value, and I can get top k, I can get the, the attention. Attention is a, is a vertical uh, uh, weighting. I didn't explain to you how we do vertical computing. It's also very efficient to do vertical. It's, it's too details to explain everything right now, but we can do the vertical, we can do operation in this direction and in this direction. So we do the vertical operation and get and get uh, this attention and coming back. Uh, this one array is called the QNN, developed by, uh, by uh, uh, Western. I, I, I think uh, most of you are, are familiar with that. Uh, uh, his network is, you can, you, you, you take this, uh, your, sentence embedding using RNN and, and uh, convert, uh, use here softmax and uh, multiply, uh, multiply the softmax by a value, get the attention and go back, back and forth and here you input the query. The same, so this function required softmax, required a, 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 a dot product multiplication, top K, everything is here. So here, how it implement, of course, key, value, softmax, all of this is in, in, in the associative array, can be done very easily. We are going to demonstrate this in our chip. This is one of our demonstration to show end-to-end -end with the Bobby, uh, uh, with the Bobby uh, text. Um, we're going to show how it work here. Again, it's order of magnitude here. Okay. Now, Let's see another hot direction in, uh, in deep learning is low shot. I'm not going to show how we do CNN, convolutional neural network, because there uh, are many, many good solutions for that. So I'm focusing on, on things which are 
hot today, which cannot be achieved. CNN diseases, again, multiple mutations, we can put the coefficients in memory, but I'm not talking. I'm just talking about things which are very exciting now in deep learning, which call it low shot, one shot learning. What is the problem with the one shot today? Gradient based optimization today, we know it is, a, is an impressive result today, and for, but it goes good for, for image classification. But this requires a lot, a lot of data uh, uh, to learn. And also in the database, for example, we need to put 5,000 different of cat, 5,000 different of dog, 5,000 different of cow. I want to put only two dog, two cow, three people, two chairs. This is, this is the law shot. Associative computing is like in the human, because in our human brain, people, when we take a child, you don't show him 10,000 different dogs and say, this is a dog. You teach him that he's a dog and say, okay, this is a dog, and he thinks that he's a cat. Next time you show him a cat, he say, okay, this is a dog and this is a cat. So the way how convolution neural networks working today is good for images, but there is, it's more academic, it's not practice, because you need so much data, so much data uh, to do that. Let's see how we do it in associative, just show you the, simple, the way, but not going to explain everything. Now, we, we go to show a zero shot and few shots. Now, let's say I take, a, with, with a zero shot, I say, I take a system that already trained. For example, I take VGG. I take the VGG, already trained to all the database, all the image data, already trained. I have a VGG. For me, it doesn't matter now if I input different images, that's what I teach. For me, the convolutional layer, it's a, it's, it's a feature generator. It's a feature generator, generate the features. I put another image and get a feature, get a feature map. It doesn't matter if it's a dog or the cat, I don't know, but it's a feature. It takes the image, let's say 220 by 220, and generates features. This feature represents what I level to it. In one case, it can be cow, one case, it can be pencil, one case, it can be chair, but it's a feature. I embedded him to, to the feature inside, and the next time, when I have another dog, I do some cosine similarity and find the top K and get which is the most closer and second and second and, and, and continue. So this is one way. Second way is, ah, okay, this is dimension relation because in the convolution layer, I want to get a feature, I want to put feature in the associative array. So in, if I looked on the convolution layer of VGG, for example, the final stage of the convolution layer, I have, five, I have seven by seven by five, 12, which is 20,000. I don't want to put 20,000 each vector. I want to reduce this feature. So I do some algorithm to reduce, to reduce the features, uh, to reduce the dimension is the input is 20,000, the output, the, for example, uh, 200. The way how it's work, I teach this matrix by if I have two similarity between two vectors of 2,000, I want the same similarity of a vector of 200. This is a cost function. So I generate, I, I do this, I, so this, in this way I reduce the feature and I'm embedding this into the associative memory. Low shot. Low shot in the, in the one shot, we use already trained uh, train data. With the low shot, it's, we, it will not start with, uh, with pre-trained. We train the data, but in different way. We train the data in the way that we have, for example, VGG, but we can put it even a very simple network that we teach the system that, that we want a similarity between, uh, we want to keep similar value between key, between key that will be closed. If they close, we want the error will be minimum. If they, if they far, if it's not close, I want the, the error will be, will be uh, far away. So I, I um, 
uh, I do the learning based on similarity search between two values and do the back propagation. And this is oriented to cosine similarity, similarity approach. Actually, we do that, we test it for on the omnigot, uh, uh, omnigot uh, uh, characters. Uh, we got in a uh, in few shot between one to four, more than 99% of, uh, of, uh, of accuracy. When we train the data based on similarity search instead of standard gradient uh, descent. Okay, uh, uh, programming a model, very simple. Uh, people write their application TensorFlow on standard CPU. Okay, the output is the TensorFlow graph is, is written to the device memory of, of the card, and here the APU chip. Uh, manipulate these uh, graphic dependencies and execute the function. So this way we program. So you write in standard a, a CPU, write TensorFlow, generate the execution graph, download to the memory. It's, Excel, it's not a society memory, it's another memory, it's a DRAM. And then we have inside the chip, I didn't explain it, inside the chip here, we have four ARC core processor to take care about that, that to control to control the chip. Okay, uh, we are uh, developing. Uh, okay, now we are in a stage in less than two months. We are tapping out the chip. We are working on it more than two years. We are tapping out in two months, and we're going to have evaluation board in around uh, April May that will have four chips that it can be used for testing to, uh, to evaluate. Uh, the performance, the performance of the card we have in every chip, we have four APU chip. Every chip have two million, two million processors, two million bit lines. So we have eight millions. We get between, uh, we get eight peta Boolean operations, eight peta Boolean operation, 6.4 teraflops, this is for floating point, but for our other, we, uh, the peak performance is eight peta. Internal because uh, the computer is a memory. We have two petabit per second internal I/O, and, uh, and we also have here some uh, DRAM for its memory device and TensorFlow TensorFlow uh, 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 support. Okay, uh, this is the current product, but we looked on the future. Let's see how far we can go with this technology. This technology, today it's work, we convert SRAM to compute. But if you looked on the non volatile memory, which has very big giga or tens of gigas, it's very low dense. See how they look like. They also have a cell, they also have a bit line, and I can program them to do the neural net, both on selective and unselective those bit line. So the non volatile memory in the future can do associative computing. So we can do computing on the, on the storage, not on the memory, on the storage in the future. So this is how, how, how it goes. So if we look on this map, today we have hard disk, flash, DRAM, L1, L2, 3, and CPU registers file. This is the memory. Here we put all this type of associative computing based on endurance. Here we have rerun based, as you can see here, here we have rerun based a, a PC RAM. And there are many types of uh, non volatile memory. This is with, 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 this is with a flash. We can do processing flash, but flash, is, there is an endurance problem. We cannot try more than. 100,000 times, so if I want to do some operation, in less than a second, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I destroy it. So it cannot be, but I can do some search, more, not, re, just, not, re, not right, just right. RERAM has, has, a better, uh, has a better performance in endurance, and every, every step which I go here, I'm going here with endurance. Here, here the endurance is better, here is better, and in SRAM with no, no, uh, no endurance. We are here right now. 
We are here, beginning in 2018, we convert SRAM to associative uh, uh, processor. We are here. That STTRAM has also very good endurance, so we believe that in five years, six years from now, we can convert, uh, we can convert the resistant RAM to do, uh, to do com uh, compute based on our approach, our patterns, we can do that. Okay, this is a, a summary. Uh, as you can see here, we can do off one, met, uh, top K, similarity search, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's fully programmable. See, it's more programmable than a standard CPU or GPGPU because I, got, I have more capability. I don't have building blocks that as floating point, uh, fixed point. It's it's a it's processor, associative processor based on memory technology. So I, I have a lot, a lot of, of, uh, of uh, flexibility. And uh, extending Moore's law and, and leveraging advanced memory technology growth. So we are following these two patterns, the better of Moore's law and, and, memory, and memory technology. Uh, okay, so this is the last slide. If there are some student, master, PhDs that want to collaborate to do some PhD project research, we'll be more than happy to help us to they can contact us. Okay, thank you very much.